Paul lived in a world of philosophy and mystery. Rome was a culture center. It was a place filled with ideas. Cicero, Seneca the Younger, Pliny the Elder, these were the influencers of the time. And in that environment, Paul brought a different perspective, the Jesus perspective. In Philippians 4, 10 to 13, Paul pushes back against his culture. He goes head to head with philosophy and mystery. Here's a question. What do two American presidents, two NFL coaches, two actresses, and Arnold Schwarzenegger all have in common? Well, it's not a trick question. It's not a joke. These seven people have all at one time studied Stoic philosophy. George Washington, Bill Clinton, uh, Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll, Brie Larson, Anna Kendrick, and Arnold Schwarzenegger have all dabbled in Stoicism, a 2,000-year-old uh, Roman school of thought. And the Stoics believed, and I guess they still kind of believe, that unhappiness and evil can be countered with understanding and reason. In other words, they believed that people could find contentment when they understood the reason behind their circumstances. Stoics were disciplined and intelligent, think Spock without the pointy ears, uh, and that's the philosophy piece. But Paul had more than just philosophy in mind when he wrote this part of the letter. In Rome and in ancient Roman culture, people were interested in the unknown. They were fascinated by secrets and secret societies. And there were multiple um, mystery cults, they called them, uh, who kept all their practices hidden. Their rituals, their hierarchy, and their knowledge, it was all kept under wraps. Now, we have our own version of mystery cults that are around today who, who build their membership based on secrecy. And I'm not going to mention them by name, but I'll give you a hint. One starts with an S and ends with Iontology. Uh, so philosophy and mystery, they've been around a long time. They've been grabbing attention for thousands of years. And Paul takes this moment to subtly address both of these groups, the Stoics and the mystery cults. And one of the topics that he has on his heart at this point is contentment. What does it mean to be content? We all know what it's like to be discontent. Like, that's easy. It's natural. It comes automatically. Uh, when life doesn't go our way, when our expectations aren't met, even when we're waiting for the next phase, graduating, getting married, uh, getting a job, buying a house, having a baby, whatever it is, we're always looking for something coming next. During that time, our default state is always discontentment. People don't have to try to be discontent. Uh, but contentment, that's a different story. Everyone has a theory about how to get and be content. I'll be content when I graduate. I'll be content when I get that job. I'll be content when I buy the house. I'll be content when I can finally start a, a family. Our theories always seem to depend on conditions, outside conditions being met before we can be content. But in Paul's day, there was a different theory. The Stoics believed, yeah, we're going back to those guys. Uh, the Stoics believed that the key to contentment was to develop understanding through personal discipline. For them, it was important to understand what you can and can't control. They encouraged people just you know, just stop desiring the things that you can't have. S just stop desiring them. Um, be disciplined. You know, that's it. And their philosophy sounds great. It sounds good. Uh, but it's like a car without fuel. Where's the motivation coming from? What can cause a change in my inherent desires like that? Unfortunately, if we're all honest with ourselves, our theories, especially the ones that depend on ourselves, they all fall short because we're flawed. Uh, we tend to mess them up. And when we default back to our normal state, we default back to discontentment. 
And that is your uplifting message from Pastor Dan today. <laughs> no, I'm not going to leave it there. Um, fortunately, Paul keeps going. Paul has the answer to the mystery of contentment. He makes a bold claim in verses 11 and 12. He says, I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live with almost nothing or with everything. Remember, people back then, they were fascinated by secrets. And that statement would have just kind of piqued their ears a little bit. Did, did he just say he knows something about contentment? Don't the, isn't that the Stoics thing? So he's kind of already taken a shot at the Stoics. And, and next, he's going to go straight for the mystery cults. Um, I have learned the secret. See, having secrets, that was their thing. And he's saying, I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. He knows what they don't know he knows. Paul knows the secret. He's got the answer to the mystery. The great thing, the great thing about being a Christian is that we don't keep the message to ourselves. We're constantly just giving away secrets all the time. We're giving them away, uh, bringing everything out in the open. It's not a mystery and it's not just for the philosopher. It's for everybody. And in verse 13, Paul, he gives away the secret. He just throws it right out there. I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Okay, you can find contentment in any situation you find yourself in. And if you're living the life or you're down on your luck, the way to live is through Christ. And it's that simple. If you've got the degree, you've got the family, you've got the job, the house, the car, the picket fence, all that stuff, you've got it all. If you've got all that, uh, you can be content through Christ. But if you don't, if your life doesn't happen to be that perfect, that's okay. You can be starving, you can be homeless, you can be sick, dying in the worst time of your life and still find strength and contentment in Christ Jesus. That's the only philosophy that you need. It solves the mystery, it changes absolutely everything everything. And I'm going to give away one more secret because I'm in a, I'm in a good mood today. It's free. Just give your heart to Jesus. Just let go of control and make him the Lord of your life. It's that easy.